Welcome back, everyone. Going into the third hour here of roleplay, the time cleaver. Zeke, I believe it's time for you to uh, <laughs> cleave some poems. All right. Suit I'll do my best. Thunder looks down at you with, with great anticipation, despite not having a face. There's <laughs> leans over you, waiting. Now, is this is this construct just like it's a wood and clock parts, like steampunk looking thing? You see, as since you get close to it, you do see clockwork underneath what are giant, like, black armor pieces. It is kind of like this monolithic, almost golem, but smaller. Um, and you see, like, weapons for hands okay. and things like that. All right. Well, I look up to, to Suplex Hunter and I go, I'm up for this challenge. I call this Ode to Suplex Thunder. <clears throat> Clear my throat. I give a bow. Time, it ticks away the hours of the day. When time is spent with you, it knows not what to do. It speeds, it slows, it comes to a halt. Ours is now an ageless love, and it's all your fault. Thank you. You hear a deep whirring from the core of Suplex Thunder, and he starts to kind of like shake in place and makes the entire tunnel shake as well. And you see in the middle of him a kind of like a uh, latched piece fly open. Just excellent. This is truly <laughs> the pinnacle of a romance. <laughs> you have proven yourself ready for the second trial. Please take a seat. You see me turn around to the group and like grab a piece of the cloth or the cloak that I just got and just fucking wipe the sweat away from my face. <laughs> <laughs> Quite and, the and like, You got this. Go. <sighs> yeah, I lean and you're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> Wait, w w um, so, okay, so you said the a piece opened up, say, uh, I'm sorry, describe the scene again. He's got panels on the front of him. You see wooden kind of panels underneath this armor, and each time, when you finished it, one of the armor pieces popped open. And okay. you see underneath there's this, this compartment kind of hidden beneath these, this sort of scaled down armor. Like it's kind of like a, like a set of dragon scales, but it's large and on the front. Okay. Um... Suplex Thunder, are you offering me something? Dinner, of course, though I lack human sustenance. Hopefully this will do. And as you look at the plates, you see gears placed on these lovely chipped plates. I just say you're the best man suited for the job. Um, he, he swoop winks at you. <laughs> I, look, I look and I shrug like... It is okay. Uh, Eating is not part of the trial. The true trial of dinner is the compliments. Oh, well, that is good for I <laughs> just ate a very large dinner. I am happy. Let, uh, let, us, let us sit and let us sup. Very well. And like suplex utter, kukunk, 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 goes over and <laughs> pulls out your chair for you and stares at you. Oh. You pulled that chair out with most deft swiftness. Thank you. Your face is very symmetrical. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Your gears were like the rushing of a gentle river. I don't know what a river is, oh. but it sounds lovely. Do you know what music is? No. Would you please <laughs> sit down? Yes, I sit. Thank you. And he shoves you harshly into the table. It hits your gut. And you're like, oh. And then <laughs> he sits down across from you and you hear the, the chair just crunch beneath him. <laughs> and he turns to the rest of you guys and goes, please do not just stand there. Serenade us. The romance levels must be increased. S serenade. Does that, what does that mean? What do we do? Uh, sing, sing. I, cl I clear my voice and, and let out a, a baritone. <laughs> I'm at the very base and all look at the other roll, two expectingly. All of you roll performance checks except for Roka. Mm. Oh my god. Good job, guys! <laughs> uh, Pine, you're a little 
rusty to singing. You you haven't been in Druid Choir for a while. I don't talk um, much. I'm not in human form all that often. The vocal cords don't get use. Uh, you do know some bird calls. You kind of try and integrate that in a little bit. Yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Crixia and and Swoop, you guys arm in arm, you just start singing the most jovial like wall guarding songs you can. It is really out of character. But you notice that Suplex Thunder is tapping his very large ten, uh, finger on the dinner table. He goes, this is a very romantic setting. I am pleased. And you hear a crack as another armor piece flips up. My song was about war. But it was like a romance. It was like under the guise of love, like your love for war. So that's what I'm singing about the whole time. Because that's like the only song I know. So. I, think, I think Pine and Swoop <laughs> are like being like the acapella yeah, exactly. Song. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just picture you like doo wopping in the back. Yeah. Wop wop wop. I go. am a bad dinner guest. I have completely forgotten to get your name. And he leans down to you, Roka. My name is Roka Atan. It is a pleasure to meet you. More like Roka a ten, and he raises up his hands happily. <laughs> I I just like break the song and just start clapping. I'm like, great joke, great joke. And <laughs> thank you, man with hands that smack together. <laughs> that was a joke. What was a joke? It, it's, okay. it, I'll explain it later. Okay. The next romance trial begins now, and you watch a suplex thunder stands up. We must begin the rhythmic motions of our bodies, as in dance. And he extends his hands out. Oh, 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 well, I think Swoop would be the best for this. Very light on his feet. And also, would, he has I, new I, dancing shoes, don't you, Swoop? I would like to roll stealth. <laughs> 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 Go ahead and roll stealth. <laughs> and you roll 15. perception. Uh, okay, you roll perception and suplex letter. Whoop, that's my dice went off the table. Okay. Oh, God. Well. I rolled perception better. <laughs> uh, Roka and suplex Thunder both see you swoop as you're just like trying to tiptoe in. You freeze like a deer in the headlights. And you see as suplex Thunder's uh, eyes go. I try and like, tiptoe and I freeze realizing I've been seen and my head like 180s back to them. <laughs> like, oh, Hi. Hello, tiny bird man. You are the yes. first person I have seen in a year. It was we wonderful. Met before, yes. Indeed, you did not say hello. It hurt. I think my feelings, but I don't have those, so it hurt something. Okay. <laughs> well, perhaps... I guess we're dancing, shall we? Yes, perhaps a dance will, we, will heal me of these wounds you have laid upon me, so. Do you even know how to dance? I'm just making sure before you go in there, make a fool of yourself. Do you know how to dance? Oh, one more word out of you. I'm just making like, I, hey, I, you know, fine. I won't, I won't help. I could teach you something real quick. You know, I watch. See, people. Swoop starts doing some stretching <laughs> lunges. Okay. Okay. Da, 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 da. <laughs> how, 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 like, suplex under weights in anticipation. How do you dance? Um, Swoop's gonna. Click his heels together to activate the boots of haste, and then do a, a Gaelic foot dance All around right. him at deftness speed. Roll a performance check with advantage. All right. Because of the boots. <laughs> God oh, damn. No. Oh, Ariara's breath. That is obnoxious. A little bit cute, but not romantic. As, I thought as, it was gonna be dexterity. I'm sorry. <laughs> as as he like as he like uh, dances, um, I quickly like I if I can, I yank onto his his uh, I yank onto his uh, outfit and I pull him back and then I start like ballroom dancing by myself as swiftly as I can. And this like I'm assuming it's pretty small space, so I'm it's, pretty big. It's, it's decent enough. It, it's, it's enough space uh, for a table and some candles everywhere. Yeah. Swoop's a little butt hurt by this. He's like, well, you didn't say what kind of dance. <laughs> uh, roll a performance check again with advantage. Uh, same person or, or me? Uh, you. you. You're, you're ballroom dancing. Oh, hey, okay. There you go. Roll. And, and so, like, I, yeah. Oh, goodness. You're As rolling. you 
As you begin to kind of dance, Suplex Thunder, you see his optical, it looks like glass now. You see two red stones behind where his eyes are. They kind of, and then he kind of starts to do the same thing, but he's doing it in his own corner. Like, this is fun. And then he doesn't really know that it's supposed to be a, a duo dance. He thinks it's its own dance. I like the rhythm of this one. It's kind of odd. Feels like something is missing. And as like as like I, I I'm twirling around, I grab my cloak, and in the candlelight, the gold that goes up the cloak uh, and illuminates like the dragon on it, uh, it just sort of glistens as I turn it around and faces it like towards the dragon. So I sort of make it seem I because I understand because there is someone missing. Um, and so I try to make it seem more like it's like its own single dance by like, uh, what is it? Waving the cloak around as well. Okay. Interesting. I lack that outfit. Perhaps I can do this. And you, his, his weapons on either side start to like swing. And he's like now going in circles with these swinging weapons. He's oh. having the time of his life. Oh my gosh. Uh, every hour, a... like duck. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's a we- weapon. It's smacking against the roof. There's little bits of cobblestone falling down kind of on the table where Roka's currently kind of sitting, kind of, and you get some more stuff on your dinner plate. And then you hear a <laughs> as the third part of the armor flips upwards. Thank you very much for this physical romantic activity, red one. <laughs> and I, I... Your... What? What? Wait, what is that? Why did you do that? That is interesting. It is a bow. Isn't that... That is what you do. You do know what a bow is. I do not. Well, it's what you do. It's a kind gesture. You always bow first when you meet someone. You hear... You can see that the the one cog in his head turn as he processed this. Excellent. I have added it to my runic components. I will do this upon the next meeting. And then he bows, just like you did. (laughs) Almost completely identical. And I just, like, walk back towards, uh, I walk back towards, um, Swoop. I'm like, don't ever tell anyone about that. Not a word. (laughs) And now the last Swoop looks up high and he's like, I'm telling everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Suflex under turns back to all you and goes, and now the final trial, the most important part of romance. Oh you no! You must Uh-oh. say that you love me. Oh, whew. oh, Pine, you love everything, right? Uh-huh. You must say it with utmost sincerity and honesty. Uh, uh, this goes against. I like, goes against everything I know. As I, I, I lean over to Pine Cricket. Look, she is made of wood. You love wood. Make the correlation. Uh, he's like saying these things in my ear, and I'm I'm looking at the the creature going up and down. How much metal is there on this creature? There's a good amount, right? Quite a bit, yeah. It's it's mostly brass. Um, the outer armor looks like some sort of darkened steel, and you do see wooden chambers beneath. Like wood, kind of is the main central kind of component. I, I turn. She was a tree once, you know. <laughs> I and turned, a rock. I turn quickly. I can't do this. As like they're a... whispering, I walk up and I bow once more. Uh, and... Suplex under bows back. And I say, it was a pleasure to meet you. And I absolutely love you and being in your presence. I want you to roll a charisma check. The, okay. We're like getting louder and louder and that breaks the, the conversation and just dead silence <laughs> happens. Okay. All right. Suplex Thunder, once again, you hear that one gear in the back of his mind. Thank you. You are the first person to pass the trial and say so. You have earned the key to my heart. And that last component (laughs) swings open, and you see inside the wooden chamber a large key. I look back at Pine and everyone. I'm like, do do I just take it? So I, I like reach forward cautiously and then just grab it and like snap my hand back, hoping nothing closes on it. As you pull out the key and you, you hold it back, uh, there's like a two seconds and then <laughs> the entire armor set snaps back. Thank you. Please take care of my heart. It is, as the humans would say, very fragile. 
I will do so. And thank you for this lovely dinner. Thank you. You did not eat it, but I appreciate the compliment. (laughs) Soup leans into the eyes and he's like, who knew the only thing she could love was a construct? I heard that. (laughs) And it's like, oh, I'm (laughs) down. Red one, if you are ever in these tunnels again and you would like to go on a romantic date, I will be here. Bring your friend Roka and perhaps another friend. We could do a double date. It would be a good time. And I walk up behind Swoop and I'm like, oh, I'm sure Swoop and I would love to come back sometime. Awesome. (laughs) And he steps back into his original position up against the wall. And you see past him a door, a large uh, metal door with a large keyhole. And you hear a as Suplex Thunder goes back to rest. I, I, I just sort of hold the key out for, um, what's the lady's name again? I forgot. Margo. Uh, Margo. Margo. I hold the key out for her and I'm like, okay, I think we're ready. Oh. That was very impressive. None of the craftsmen could do that. And we're mostly shut in, so that's probably why. Um, well, well done. Uh, you should show me that dance. That seemed rather lovely. Perhaps another time. I'd rather just, uh, rather just yes. move on. Yes, time is of the essence. Let's go. And Margot rushes to the door and fuchunk, puts the key in and uh, it creaks open and you're met with fresher air. And Margot steps up and she stops. She goes, um, at this point, I probably should stay down here. Um, Why is um, that? We, you know this place. Dangerous. We don't know it at all. Um, oh, I, I guess she can true. handle any orcs. Yeah, that's more or less what I'm concerned about. Um, I could give you directions. Mm, could you put them on a crude map of sorts? Uh, certainly. Here, let me draw on this convenient piece of paper I have. <laughs> Wait, we have a brand new cloak. We'll just tear that. And I reach for the cloak that uh, I guess is on Roka's back now. And we go to like tear the fabric to use as a map. Um, if you would please not do that. Oh, I apologize. Oh. Margot, did you say you had a piece of parchment to provide us with? I think she's drawing the map. Oh, okay. Give me one second. I'm drawing. We're low on charcoal, so, you know. Uh, when you exit this tunnel, there'll be a few doors to your um, your left. Um, just ignore those. Those are our working chambers. If you go ahead, there's a spiral car- uh, staircase. Take it all the way to the top, and there should be a chamber in there. Um, I'm not allowed into the inner sanctum. No one is, honestly. Uh, the sheath is very sacred and also apparently very magical. Um, so just be wary. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, good luck. Swoop. Yes? I'm looking, at, I'm looking at you, and I'm looking hmm. at these three doors. Tempting though they may be, maybe don't open them. No, you're absolutely right. Stay on track for the powerful magical trinket. Yes, in right. fact, you take the lead. How about? How about? Yes, I shall. Perfect. He bravely marches forward. All right. Uh, you march forward, and you see some of the doors are kind of creaked open, and you kind of you kind of peek in, swoop. It's a little bit too tempting, but you just see, mm. like, workshop tables and, like, bits of clockwork, nothing of any real value. You see, swoop keeps walking in a straight line, but you see his head occasionally, like, completely swivel so he can get views on what's in the rooms. But he stays strong. As you peek into the last room, you do see kind of a sad sight. You see a few craftsmen face down dead, um, apparently slaughtered by the invaders of this temple. Mm. Uh, before we go, uh, I ask Margot, are you, are you armed? Do you have anything to defend yourself? God, no, I have this. And she pulls out like a little kind of wrench looking thing. Um, I think if it's okay, if I go back into the tunnel, maybe until this, um, until things are improved, hopefully. Okay. Well, take this dagger, and I just pull out my the dagger I just have for, you know, other stuff. And I, I give it to her. Um, when we meet again, I will require this dagger back. So be safe and be careful. Uh, she grabs your, your kind of your, your arm, your, your upper arm. She goes, um, 
we're not allowed to talk about it, but the time cleaver, the item in that um, reliquary chamber, um, it is the weapon of a god. If they get their hands on it, I, I fear potentially the end of the world. And she lets nope, go sure. of your... Of course. Ooh. Um, <laughs> good luck. Thank you. And she nods and she <laughs> opens up the... Uh, you notice now that the uh, the way into these tunnels is like a um, locked up sort of um, cellar door. And she... Tunk, tunk, tunk. <laughs> All right. Well... Good thing that not a lot is writing on this. Yeah. I thought it was just the forest. Didn't realize it was the entire world. I've changed my mind about going first, so... <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, you seem pretty brave there for a while. Pretty sure, yes. Oh, okay, uh, I guess Guess I'll take the lead. As you guys step forward, you meet, meet the spiral staircase and you begin to walk up probably about a good three stories uh eventually uh leading you see a a simple wooden and brass door closed i'm going to uh listen okay uh you hear nothing you hear okay. silence okay well mm. open it cautiously then you open it up and you see um, what looks like various plinths with different sort of items inside. Um, some are smashed open and you see wall to wall these large stone carvings. It looks like it's playing out a legend of some kind. Um, and as you enter, the room smells very nice. Um, you notice most of the um, plinths have been knocked asunder. Um, broken. You may assume that this is where the items may have been taken potentially, who knows. Um, but you also see one uh, plinth where sitting in a glass box is a pug. Like a dog. <gasps> is it alive? Yep. It's sitting in the box. It's a clear glass box. It's currently sitting on top of this plinth and it's staring at two of you because its eyes are going in two different directions at the moment. Oh... Uh... You also see another plinth with an orb inside, and you see another plinth with what looks like some sort of weird clockwork construction inside, potentially something of a gift. And then you see the large stone carvings on the wall. Um, not really. So a pug, an orb. A what pug, else? an orb, and a, and a clock. And a clock. Yeah, like a, like a prototype looking clock. Okay. You get the uh, sense that this is some sort of museum or perhaps some sort of um, place to store powerful items or items of significance of some kind. You also do remember in passing at the at the local tavern, um, talk, uh, spoken words of this pug. And what do these words speak? <laughs> they don't wish to speak of it, apparently. Whenever anyone asks, they, they say, don't talk about it. Don't talk about the pug. Okay. Um, What's a puppy doing in a box? Why don't you go pet it and find out? I shall. Okay. No, um, don't touch it, please. What? Well, it's a I dog. Don't. What could possibly well, be wrong? Please, look around. Anything this in a box not, was put there for a reason. And this is in a locked chamber. It's not an ordinary dog, so um, I walk over to it and I inspect it. And then I just tentatively say, hello there. It, <laughs> it just breathes heavily. <sighs> Please step aside, Roka, if you, if you don't mind. All right. I walk up and crack my knuckles, uh, and then reach out and, and stroke the dog's ears, and I'll cast Speak with Animals. As you try to stroke, your, your hand hits the glass case that it's inside of. We need the dog out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got I got lost in its eyes. I can speak with him very easily if we let him out. Why why can't you speak to him through the glass? It, can I make a religion second. check to see what these what the pug orb and clock signify? 
Uh, yeah, you could do just a general religion check. Okay. Um, so I'm reading through Speak With Animals. It just says the range is self, so I guess I can just talk with any animals? I'd say, um, I'd say it won't work. Uh, you will attempt it. I'll say, I, don't take off a spell um, slot, but if you attempt it, the box actually blocks it out. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I, <laughs> I turn to Roka. I understand the idea of putting him in the box, but if we take him out, I can speak with him. Perhaps we can learn more. What if we tie a rope around its neck so it can't escape? Hmm. I once knew travelers that decided to put ropes around animals. It didn't go well. <laughs> it's it's a pug. It's it's I'm not it's not a bear. I'm not trying to just make sure it doesn't like escape. You know, it is it's a small, fast creature and I don't want it to I, I look around where eh. is it going to go? How big is the orb? Mostly? The orb is like the size of like a baseball. Okay. I while this discussion is taking place. I would like to attempt. Is there any way to open the glass case without breaking it? Uh, you can slight a hand. I'd like to slight of hand and try and steal this orb. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Good rule of D&D. If, if action is ever lacking, bring a thief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As everybody else is conversing, you reach to like push the glass over, and your hand actually goes through it. Like it's incorporeal. And you mm. grab the orb and you pull it out. It is a drift globe. You've seen these before. They are light sources. Mm. I think uh, holding it, I just turned to the group. I don't think the glass is really glass. And you can see that I'm holding one of the relics. What? What are you doing? What? Why are you holding that? What are you? Oh, it's, it's fine. I know exactly what this is. And what is Catch. it? I and toss I, it to you. I, I like grab it. I'm like, oh, I treat it like it's like delicate. And I just like hold it. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I pass it off to, to Roka and then immediately reach down to uh, open or, or basically, yeah, free the pug from what it's in. All right. You grab the pug. Yes. The, okay. You scruff the pug and you pull it out. And as you pull it out, it begins to float in the air as you let go of it. Mm -hmm. And you hear this deep voice in the back of your head go, thank you. And the pug just blinks out of existence and is gone. Oh, did someone say that? Who said that? Who? Did you guys hear that? He's gone. Oh. Hmm. Uh, we should so... have left him in the box. I don't know why anyone would ever want to take him out. I'd use it's your I... idea. Mm, no. <laughs> As you guys are conversing, you now hear the door <laughs> grind on the other side of where you've entered. Well, we should go. We solved this puzzle. Good work, everyone. And I, I, uh, I grab the orb and toss it back um, to swoop. I'm like, we should go. We, we should probably go. We should. Wait. The, the dog might not have anything to do with anything. This clock, though... I mean, we are looking for the time cleaver, so I'm assuming the clock might have something to do with it. Oh, if you want to touch it. I mean, I, the last thing I touched disappeared on me, so. I have no need for clocks. We have the sun in the sky. This is a not needed contraption, but by all means, if you wish to. How big is the clock? Is it like a, like a clock that like stands on a mantelpiece? It looks like about the size, this is kind of a weird comparison, about the size of a GameCube, a Nintendo GameCube. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That was a weird comparison. Yeah, that's... Sorry. Uh, not working. <laughs> right. I know, I know how big it was. I yeah. know that size. Yeah. Um, well, I pick, I pick that up and put it in my pack, because I, if whatever's coming, we don't want it to get their hands on it. It is clunky as heck, but you manage to kind of shove it into the bag. Okay. Um, I want uh, anybody else who wants to roll a religion check, except for Roka, because you... Oh. Ooh. Interesting. Um, as you're looking around uh, Swoop, you look up and you begin to read kind of the carvings and you see sort of a scenic piece by piece sort of telling of a story. Um, you see two gods, which you actually recognize as the god of the anvil and the god of art. 
uh, constructing a clockwork goddess in a workshop. And then you see in the next panel, you see that same clockwork goddess wielding a sword against a giant, massive mound of teeth and fangs and claws, and they are engaged in a great battle. In the next panel, you see the creature had smashed down this clockwork goddess, and you see her land on a mountain, and you see the sword at the peak of this, this ziggurat-like temple you guys are in, and then it ends there. These drawings are correct. This could be the resting place for that weapon. He points at the sword. You can read that? Oh. What do you mean? It's pictures. Yeah, it just looks like scribblings to me. <laughs> well, I suggest we take our items, the ones that are still here, and bring them to... Or bring them to, to safety. You guys haven't... There's a door on the other side still, still open. Mm. Yeah, to the I... next chamber. If you recall Marco's map. Oh. You guys are in this chamber. There's another chamber forward. Uh, what say we say press something on? was opening as well? Yeah, yeah once the, the pug blipped out of existence, it opened the door for you. Oh. oh okay. That's what opened, okay. Mm-hmm. I thought the door was closing behind us. That's why I was like, we should go. My bad. I misunderstood that. I it's apologize. all good. Okay. Mm. Well, continuing on. Yes, all Swoop. Right. Up to you. You guys continue on forward. And as you walk, Swoop, you kind of notice more carvings in the wall. You see the construction of the temple. And you see um, what looks like clockwork creatures um, basically maintenancing the temple and placing the sword in a large chamber. And as you guys step forward, there's a boom, boom, boom behind you as an actual, like Pocket mentioned, an actual large stone slap locks behind you. Well, only one way to go now. <sighs> or uh, does anybody speak Celestial? Uh, no. Uh, nope. No. Common nope. Druidic and Kinku for me. You do see as you walk a carving in Celestial on the wall, but since Sunny you speak Celestial, it just looks like scribbles. Yeah. Is there is there a way out of this? Is there like only one way to go? Yeah, only one way to go, and that's forward. Yeah. Okay. Guess we're going forward. I'll take the lead. All right. As you step forward, you see now peeking out of parts of the wall um, cogs. Running in the walls, and another slams down behind you as you progress every 10 feet. Another thing falls down behind you. What a weird contraption people build. It's as if they don't want us to leave. I can understand then why people don't want to come in here. And as Where you strike. I'm orcs! I haven't seen a single one! <laughs> as you break forward. Uh, you guys see now, you get the smell of acid. There's a, there's a strange green yellowish tinge to the, to the room as you enter. And as you enter, you see standing in front of the altar, the largest looking orc you've ever seen in your life. Um, you see two orcs on either side of him currently impaled on what looks like javelins, sacri um, as if a sacrifice. Um, you are you enter this chamber with pillars rising from the sky as well as acid pools dipping down below um, And I will take you to the page oh, And you see a large orc like creature turn and as he turns this orc Doesn't really look much like an orc kind of like what Margo said looks more like a monster It's huge. It's like eight feet tall Along its back are these almost like scale, like large plated um, scales, like kind of like a pangolin or an armadillo running down its back. It's got these large horns pointing forward. It looks kind of like a tanaruk, but it's not. It, it's not a natural tanaruk. And as it turns, you see now in its hand, um, the time cleaver is in its hand, but the hand has grown over almost like a mutation spreading in skin and flesh has melded over the hilt of this sword, which has 
cogs currently turning on it, and the blade is long and bronze and silver. <clears throat> and this orc-like creature sees you, looks at the blade, and immediately smiles as if pigs to the slaughter have just shown up. Well, there's I, look at, I look at him <laughs> in orcish. Um, sorry to barge in. Are we interrupting something? No, you're right on time. Everybody oh, yeah, no, I think it's time to go, actually. Where are we going to go? Is the door shut behind us? Yep. <laughs> Kangoo turns his head 180 and sees the, the door is closed. And he's like, oh, um, well then. I pat, I pat Swoop on the back. I'm like, don't miss this time. All right. May I ask, before anything too violent occurs, what is your plan with that most ornate sword? It belongs to Ganesh now, and now it will belong inside of your stomach. And he's going to move because you guys are talking to him. Well, I don't see this ending well. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take out the uh, Alavastian elixir and down All it right. real quick so I can get my wild shapes back. Yeah, I'm going to say now if you guys are wanting to drink those potions, now is the time. I'm going to do the same then. Oh, uh, wait, do we have a healing potion? Yep. Yeah. You have healing potions, 2d4 plus 4. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got two of those. Okay. Nice. So I'm going to get all my health points back. Oh. <sighs> is my hunter's mark still up? It stays up for an hour. Uh, this is probably going to be on an hour at this point between walking through the tunnel and okay. the romantic dinner you guys had and the chamber before. I'm going, uh, unless we have to roll initiative. You have to roll initiative at this point. He's aware of your presence, time. and he's he's ready to fight you. <laughs> okay. Nice. It's my team. Seven. Oof. Nine. Eight. Who has the higher dexterity? I assume, um... Stripping's got a four. Yeah. Okay. So that is... Rook has got really good initiative. Holy Hannah. Yep. And then... Sorry, it was Swoop has the higher initiative, right? Or the higher dexterity. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oops, I added you twice. All right. Crixie, it's now your turn. You see this large, evil-looking orc thing uh, now approaching with this large great sword in his hand. He's dragging it behind him almost pyramid head style across the floor and it's scraping and sparking as he lumbers forward with it. I am going to move forward as I cast Hun Hunter's Mark on him. Hey. So use my bonus action. I'm going to move right there in front of the group. And I think I want to cast Shield of Faith on myself. All right, that gives you plus two to your AC, correct? Yes. Okay. And I am going to just wait defensively for him. Raka, it is now your turn. Um, would this creature count as humanoid? Um, it counts as a fiend. Technically. So not, hum not humanoid, okay. It is humanoid in nature, but it's technically classified as a fiend. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Oops. Okay. Um. Oh, I can't. I can't. Uh, show the faith. It's a. It's a concentration, isn't it? Oh yeah, and your 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 hunter's mark is concentration yeah, as well. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather have a uh, hunter's mark, I guess. Okay. Do you want to do something else with your action then? Just... Um, I mean, I don't think there really is anything I could I could really do right now. Okay. Back to you, Roka. Okay. Um, let's see. I am going to move. Oops, damn it! I'm going to move forward. Okay. And I am going to. Let's see here. 
40 feet. So I got to move 10 feet forward. Uh, I will move to, um, wait, does that, no, that doesn't work. To the bottom right of, of uh, uh, Crixia. Bottom right, right here? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I will move there and then I will cast uh, Blindness. Okay, that's a constitution save, correct? Yeah, uh, yes it is, yep. Okay. Oof, 19 plus 5, that's 24. Okay, so that's a, that's a save. Damn, okay. You cast the spell and you see the divine light like shroud around his eyes and he just shakes his head and the divine light like chains shatter and he kind of laughs and he goes... Oh, I hope you're ready to see your god as he brandishes the weapon. Okay. He is going to stride directly towards you, and he is going to attempt to swing. What's his... Oof, dear lord. Uh -oh. Eight plus seven, that's 15 to hit. How much are you seeing? 18. He reaches back, and you just duck under as he rings the sword across. He's going to attempt to do a claw attack against you with his other hand. Okay. That is a 14 to hit, which misses as well. He goes with the sword, nice. and he reaches out uh, vertically to like, slice at you, and you just duck your head back, and he just misses. You hear a scraping of your armor as these three claw marks uh, break through your armor a bit, kind of scuffing the lovely shine that you've worked so hard on. Oh, I, I mean, I just am concentrated on, on him right now. So I dodge and I have my heart's a little racing a little bit. Cause he's just really, really big. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you actually see him closer to, um, you see that he's got like actual like arrows still in his body, almost like trophies of battle put okay. in like all different places in his body. Um, swoop. It is now your turn. I'm a, I'm going to chew him with the bow. All right. <sighs> 15. Is that, is that hit? 15. You aim and you fire and you hit his horn and the arrow like shatters across his horn. He kind of flinched. He goes, <sighs> he glares at you angrily. That's <laughs> why so I didn't hit. Well, it hit him, but it, he's kind of armored, naturally. Shit. All right. That's me. Pine Cricket, it is now your turn. Uh, I want to cast... Um, I want to cast Heat Metal on him. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I guess that rolled the damage instead of showing the actual spell. Let me just paste the spell. The DC 13 Constitution save. Yeah. There's the actual spell text. 12 plus 5, so that's 17. So he passes the constitution save. I assume he takes half. I'm trying to see here, yeah. It or was oh, it's, the con save is to see if he can just hold the object. If he doesn't drop see, the he object, can't, it has disadvantage he, on attack rolls and ability checks and will start the next turn. He can't drop it because it's technically attached to his body. Oh, so I guess he'll just take flat damage every turn then? Yeah, he'll just be taking just the damage from it. None right. of the penalties, really. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's 2d8. Uh... We could just do the 7 that's there. Right, I'm just seeing how often it happens. Uh, you can use a bonus action on each of your subsequent turns to cause this damage again. Okay, so it's a bonus action every turn. Gotcha. Uh, and then as my bonus action this turn, I will turn into a dire wolf. And, All right. And uh, stride up next to him. I uh, as I as I pass by the owl, I make like a, a chomping noise towards him, so I walk <laughs> right next to him. Uh, and then that's my turn. All right, Crixia, it's now your turn. As uh, as I dodge out of, out of his uh, his uh, swing attack, I immediately then draw my sword and and try to bring it up into his ribs. Okay, you swing, and you manage to break the skin a little bit, but it grinds up against the scaled hide and exterior that he's got to him, and you swing it back, and he kind of looks down at you. He's kind of, like, puffing out his chest, but he just kind of, <laughs> kind of chuckles at you. As my, as my, like, sword, like, bounces back and, like, bounces off his skin, I'm just like, what the? 
<sighs> okay. Um. Raka, it is now your turn. Okie dokie. Well, I will... Uh, spiritual weapon is a bonus action, so I can cast... Or I can I can pop my my potion to, or actually can I I can do them in any order I can do action and bonus action in any order. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I will do, use my bonus action to cast a uh, spiritual weapon. Okay. Um, um, which is melee attack. Oh yeah. Let's see. And I can keep it out like it's a, it's a weapon that I can just like. I think I can just attack with. Oh, when you cast a spell, you can make a melee attack against a creature within five feet of the weapon. On a hit, the target takes force damage equal to... Okay. Um, I... Okay. So, you summon it... Where do you want to summon the weapon? Uh, summon it to to his... to uh, Straight ahead of me to his, uh, to his left. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, as my... Whoops, sorry. I pressed it twice. As my regular sorry. action, I'm going to... Uh, drink that potion. Okay. Then restore all my spell slots. Your sword goes to swing, and it just gonging up against the uh, the back hide of this creature. Yeah, it was, it was probably <laughs> rolled pretty bad for the yeah, first one. For sure. <clears throat> you rolled I a hot I one. Clicked... <laughs> I rolled pretty good when I accidentally clicked it, so it's going to be a shame. <laughs> Uh, taking interest in now the snapping wolf next to him, this creature turns and it swings the blade towards you. Ooh, that'll hit. That's that's a 22 to hit. Yep, I've got 14 AC. Okay. What's Why did the I put... damage? What's the damage? I will find out if I can find where I put my dice. There we go. That is... You take 14 points of slashing damage. Damn. And I'm going to need it. Give me one sec, because there's an additional thing that's going to happen here. Okay, roll four D100s, please. Four D100s. Oh, All right. shit. Mutations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, 93, 13, 45, 87. 238. That puts you... That puts you... Right there. Uh-oh. Okay. So you guys watch as this creature slices into your friend, and he just disappears. And the creature stops and looks very confused. He's like, huh? And he's just like kind of looking like, did I kill him in one shot? And then as you guys kind of turn and look, you see pew, falling from the other side, a wolf lands. And you see now the blades, the, the cogs in the blades kum, 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 begin to turn again in the sword. <sighs> well then. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Swoop. It is now your turn. What is okay. going? Um, what do the boots of speed do? Because I don't three point five. They give you haste, but I don't think they do that anymore. They give you sixty, I believe, sixty foot. Let me look that up real quick. Boots of haste. I believe you get uh, sixty feet of of movement a turn. The, uh, uh, the use, old... use a bonus action to click these boot heels together. If you do the boots, double your walking speed. And any creature that makes an opportunity attacks against you has disadvantage on the attack roll. Nice. Okay. And that's a bonus action, right? A bonus action to activate them, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to use my bonus action for uh, Hunter's Mark. Okay. And then I'm going uh, to attack again. Nice! Mm. Ooh, that's a crit. Nice. 20 oh my damage. God. 20 nice. damage. Plus Hunter's you... mark damage, right? Yeah. Yes. 26. Oh my God. 26 damage. You pull back the bow and you aim and you let loose the it's arrow. It's 30 damage. 30 damage. Does oh, Hunter's plus, mark yeah. crit? I have Colossus Slayer. And... Oh, yeah. And I don't have Hunter's mark crits. Um, uh, he, has... he wasn't damaged, though, before. Oh, he wasn't? No. no yeah, no, we I haven't hit him yet. No. Oh, you guys suck. All right. 20, 24. Well, I did heat metal him for seven. Did that not do anything? Uh, oh, wait. Yes, you did. So, yeah, you do get the damage. Okay. All right. He did cool. take heat metal damage. 30 so, yes, damage. 30 nice. damage. You aim. 
you've dealt with bigger foes. You aim and you aim up and you let loose the arrow and you watch as that arrow flies through his eye socket out the back. <laughs> and he grabs his head and he screams. And as he reaches back his hand, you see the arrow stuck in his eye. I, I turn. I give a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> And he grits his teeth angrily. Uh, Pine Cricket, you are displaced. You're a little confused. But you hear a commotion on the other side of this pillar. Yeah, I can move 50 feet. So this is 30. F Actually, I'll move 40 feet. So we'll do that. Okay. Uh, I appear behind him. And first off, I'll use bonus... Uh, Action to do the heat metal damage, so 2d8. Okay. Uh, six. It's not much, nice. but some. Uh, and then I will make a uh, uh, bite attack with pack, tactic, pack tactics. Uh, when an ally is within five feet of the creature and the ally is not uh, incapacitated, I get uh, advantage on the attack. Uh, okay. And he's flanked, so it gets plus, plus two, two as well. Uh, so let's do d20 plus... 7, 20, or 25. Either of those Both seven. hit. Alright. Uh, and then the damage is 2d6 plus 3. Uh, 10. Alright. You leap onto his back and you grab one of the scales and you tear it out of his back. It's hard and kind of like, it's like, what, what is it called? What's fingernails made out of? I forgot. I'm so sorry. Um, it's cut. Yeah, kind of callous-like and, and very hard. And you, you take it and you rip it out. And along with it, you rip out pieces of the flesh. And there's now a big gaping wound on his back. And he rears back and curls his spine inwards and lets out a horrific roar. And now, Crixia, it's now your turn. As he turns around, uh, I take uh, aim at the wound that is on his back that... Um, He's still facing you. He just oh, kind of curled his back back, like, Ugh, you know, when someone oh, kind of jabs okay. you in the spine. Well, I'm yeah. going to just stab him again then. Just Lazzy's, uh, yeah. Hey. Oh, I'm doing terrible. Uh, as my bonus act, or can I, I have a question real quick while it's my turn. Um, before he turns to anyone else, am I allowed to intimidate him or try to intimidate him? I, you could, but... Dealing with orcs, especially one who looks like he's the leader, it, this would be a really hard endeavor, especially considering that he is on a power trip at the moment. Because okay. I was just going to try and keep his focus on me, so he tries to attack me the whole time. You could time. do it to do that. Scaring him at this point would be very hard, but if oh, you I want to just, like, challenge like, him. I just want to, like, talk crap and be like, yo, focus on <laughs> me. I'm your real battle. Like, you're, you're nothing. You're nothing. That'd be, that'd be a free action if you want to you wanna heckle him. Yeah, I want to heckle him pretty much. What, what do you say? What do you say to him? Oh, I tell him that I've fought harder foes. Like he's nothing. That this will be easy. And once he's down, we're gonna take the weapon and and leave, and we're gonna slaughter everyone that is left in his tribe. So he snarls at this, um, and then you bring up your weapon, and as he does, he lifts up the sword and just king ling parries your sword and knocks it back. That um, ends your turn. Yeah, I'm done. Roka, it's now your turn. Okay, I'm going to, as my bonus action, I can move the sword. Okay. So I'm going to uh, move the sword to the other side of him. Alrighty. And attack with it. <laughs> I can't grab the sword. I have to make it bigger. Oh, no. Okay, well. <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> Why can't I, sword. Can't even, I can't even grab the sword anymore. Right, I'll draw no, a new it's a magical greatsword. It's fine. <laughs> There's your new sword. Okay, so it moves the other side. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I didn't, I did I have to roll an attack roll. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Um, one second. If you just click it in the spell list, it'll do it automatically. Yes, there it is. Okay, nice. Is. That hits. Okay. And then, um, are we taking just the six that I rolled before, or do I hit it again? Yeah, just hit it again. Okay. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's Damn. much better. Much better. <laughs> All right. So I do the spiritual weapon, move it to the other side, take a slice at him with that. It's in, or actually, it's it's appears as a. Um, <laughs> oddly enough, 
It appears like a shimmering shovel. Okay. Because that's like, you know, one of the holy symbols of of uh, Hoketh. So it appears as a shimmering shovel and like bashes him oh. in the head. And then right. I move forward because that's a bonus action. And now I can move forward and do a regular action. Okay. So I'll move to the side of him. And I will do the the inflict wounds, but I'll, I'll I will cast it as a second level spell. So I get four d ten rather than three d ten. All righty. So I'll make my touch attack. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Touch attack. Come on. Seventeen. That just hits. Oh, oh god! Nice. Thank god. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I will, because he's distracted on the other side. He gets hit with a shovel. Bang! I reach up, do a little motion. And reach out with one finger and hit him. Big damage. Level two for 16. Not bad. Nice. You reach. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh. It's only rolling. It only rolled. I, I put my cursor over it. It only rolled 3d10. Oh, is it add another d10 for level two cast? So I Yeah, it does. That's what casting so, it. I actually 18. cast it at level two. But so uh, I will add one more d10. Oh, oh no, so no! It already did it yeah, automatically. It already rolled the two it. Is... Yeah, that's where the two is yeah. exactly. So you did eight. Oh, oh, that's the plus. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. So eighteen total. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. You, as you touch him, and you see as your your shovel hits him right in the face, like it's like pong right in the face. You see a tooth <laughs> fly off and scatter in the distance. And as he's like pushed over, you press your uh, palm up against kind of his his abdomen, and as it does, like a snap of, of lightning, you see these running lines of necrotic damage run up his entire front part of his torso, and you, you hear him gasp for breath, kind of echoing in the kind of divine metal of the shovel. It is now his turn. He is very angry now. He <laughs> Yeah, let's see if he teleports someone and we'll take a break. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Um... Just to keep in mind, that's... these are pools of acid, I, I think, correct? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. They are. Ooh, boy, that's a 19 plus 7 to hit you, Roka. I'm ready. <laughs> take me, Hoketh. <laughs> <laughs> you take uh, 15 points of slashing damage. Ooh. I want you to roll two D100s. Okay. Oops. Do I? What do I do? Just slash two D one hundred. Slash R two D hundred. Okay, and that's not it. Uh, it should just be like this, like that without the. Without the. Oh, slash there. roll. It's not slash R. Okay. I think you could do two. You can do slash R. I don't know. There we go. Got right. it. Fifty, fifty-one, one hundred six. One hundred six. Fifty-five. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Total one hundred six. You end up on top of this pillar. Whoa! <laughs> this is a surprising development. <laughs> How high up is he? He's 10 feet up. Oh, okay, not too bad. Um, so you guys watch, uh, Krixia, you watch as this creature swipes low with the blade, slashing Roka across his chest, and then suddenly you, you see bleep, bleep, as he shows up, wounded on top of the pillar. Nice. All right, and with that, let's take our, uh, our final break. You can just jump down from there, Zeke. You'll be fine. It'll be great. Uh, yeah, I'll be just fine. Yeah, it'll just be, it'll be great. Yeah, you'll just have to roll an acrobatics, I'm sure, and you'll pass that with flying colors. We'll find out more <laughs> <laughs> when we get back uh, right after this as we head into the final hour here of Roleplay, the Time Cleaver. We'll see you guys then. <laughs> 